Today, we're gonna to be covering a common failure point on check rides, and that is how to load and activate holds in our G1000 system. I'm going to be showing you on our PFD and MFD in the uh, Cessna G1000 airplane how to load each one of these different types of holds and activate them. Today, we're going to be in the Cessna 172, but this information also applies to all of the Piper Archers, Piper Seminoles, and any other airplane that's equipped with Garmin avionics. All right, let's hop in the airplane and get started. Now that we're in the airplane, I'm gonna be showing you how to load a hold at a waypoint on a flight plan that you have built into the G1000. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is hit this FPL button down here on the bottom right, and that's going to bring up our flight plan. So to adjust on our flight plan and select points, we'll first push in on this FMS knob, and that selects a point, and then we use this large knob here on the back side of the FMS to scroll up and down between points to select which point we want to hold on. Once we've selected the point, we'll select here at ferret is where we're going to do our hold. We're gonna select the direct button here on the top left of this panel. So we'll select direct. And again, again, we're gonna use the large FMS knob to scroll down to the bottom right. And we're gonna highlight where it says hold. Once we have that highlighted, we're gonna select the enter button on the bottom right. And this brings up our hold information. So right here, we can use again, the big FMS knob to scroll in between the selection options. Once we've highlighted what we want to change, we can change our course and a great thing about our advanced avionics in this G1000 is going to be that it takes a lot of the guesswork out of what we're doing. So if you were to hold the hold on a course of 270, you use the small knob to adjust whatever you have as selected. So we can say we're going to hold 270. So once we have 27, the small knob is going to adjust those two first numbers. So we have selected 27, then we'll use the large FMS knob to come over to the single digit and then the small FMS knob to adjust that number, 270. And then once we have that selected, you'll hit enter. And now we can see it has built in hold east of ferret. So our course 270, our inbound leg is 270, and that shows us to hold east. Now, if we switch this to outbound, we would see it now shows us holding west of ferret. So it's really nice that our advanced avionics in here, the G1000 takes all the guesswork, you put in the information that you need and it gives you the answer. So additionally, what we'll do is we'll still go ahead and select this back to inbound and then select enter. Now with your different types of hold, whether it's a timed hold or a distance hold, you can put either one of those into here. So again, once we have highlighted, we'll use the small FMS knob to adjust back and forth to whichever one we want. So if we're going to do a standard distance leg, we'll select distance, press enter. We'll do a standard, we'll leave it as a standard four nautical mile. If you did want to adjust, again, that's gonna be the small FMS knob. Select which one you want to adjust. And then once you've completed adjusting, select enter. Again, for our turns, you can adjust this again with the small FMS knob, whether it's gonna be left turns or right turns. We'll leave it on the standard right turns and select enter. And another great feature is the EFC time, expect further clearance. So again, taking so much guesswork and so much pilot error out of the equation, we can put in our EFC time. So the current EFC time we can see right over here is 1654 Zulu. So if we wanted to put in, uh, let's say it's, they give us a 10 minute time. So we'll go 16, we'll change that to zero and we'll change that to a 41704 Zulu. So that's about 10 minutes from now. We'll select enter, and then we see it highlights activate, and we want to activate that. So then we'll select enter again, and now it has built our hold into our flight plan. And we can select it here, highlight it, and then we can use our range knob. It automatically comes over here, and we can use the range knob to zoom in and out and see that it has built the hold correctly for us. All right, so the next type of hold that we're going to be looking at is also along with our flight plan that we were just looking at. So again, selecting our flight plan, pushing in on the FMS knob to select, get the selector, and then we'll use the large FMS knob to scroll down. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and loaded an approach into 
AMA. So I've got the Arnav GPS Yankee 3.1 LPV built in. So another common place that we're going to find holds is the missed approach procedure. So the missed approach procedure we'll see is already built in to this here beyond our missed approach point. So our missed approach point is here at the runway, runway 31. And once you have crossed runway 31 missed approach point, you'll actually come right over here and there's going to be a button that appears here where the OBS button is right now that is SUPS for suspend. And you'll select that suspend button after you have gone past the missed approach point. It's very important that you activate that after the missed approach point because if you do it before, it will not activate correctly. So once you have crossed the missed approach point, you'll select suspend and that will now activate the missed approach procedure. Now, once we follow our missed approach procedure and get to our hold here, we can come in and select menu if necessary. This should all auto sequence if you correctly select the suspend, but if not, you can come in here and select activate leg and you'll see this come up and it shows our hold here in the center and shows either activate or cancel. We'll select enter on activate. And now we can see it has activated that hold. So we'll be flying directly from whatever point that we are at currently to Lynette to hold. All right, the next type of hold that we're going to be loading in here is going to be a hold at a waypoint or a user waypoint. Now the hold at a waypoint is very similar to the very first one we showed uh, on the flight plan. All right, so very similar to the flight plan, we're selecting a waypoint, but this isn't necessarily on a, way, on a flight plan. This could be maybe you're out doing training or just told to go to a specific waypoint. So you can either select the direct button and type it in, or you can use the range knob, push in on the range knob, and then use the range knob cursor that we have here, you can push up, down, and around to move that cursor to the waypoint that you wanna hold at. So we're gonna select SAR over here, and you can see the difference between being next to it and when it's actually highlighted. So once it's highlighted, you'll select the direct button. You'll use the large FMS knob to scroll up and down until we highlight hold here in the bottom right. Once we have that highlighted, we'll select enter and we again come to this screen, just like we saw in the beginning, that lets you customize the hold however you want to customize it. So first, again, we use this to go back and forth and the small FMS knob to make adjustments to the course. There's the first two. We can come over to the second and we'll select a course of 090. And when we select enter, you'll see right up here, we are gonna be holding west of Sayar on a course 090 inbound. We'll change this to either a time or a distance hold. If we do a time hold like you'll typically do on VORs, a one minute leg, you can again adjust that however necessary. Select enter, right or left turns. We'll do the non-standard left turn on this one. Enter, and again, we can select our EFC time. The current time is 17.09. When we move the small FMS knob, it puts the current time in. So that way you can come in here and select however long you want to put in for that EFC time, whatever you're assigned from ATC. Once you have that, we'll select enter. Make sure it's highlighted on activate, and we'll select enter again. We can see it's taking from our current position direct to SAR, and then we can zoom in here and see it shows us entering that hold and then holding. All right, so the next type of hold that's very similar is going to be using a map waypoint or a user waypoint. So if I zoom out here, you'll see I've created a map waypoint right here. And the way that I did that is I just put my cursor out here wherever I want this waypoint to be. I'll select the direct button and we see it creates map waypoint. I'll bring this down to the hold button, select enter. And again, we can customize this however we've seen fit. And once that's all done, we come down to activate and we've activated the hold again here at our map waypoint. So to create a user waypoint, if we wanted to create a waypoint that's going to stay in our G1000, we'll again use the cursor to select whatever point, whatever place we want this user waypoint to be. And we'll select the enter button here in the bottom right. 
and we'll see it comes up user waypoint and we can name this user waypoint, whatever you wanna name it. So we can hit name this user waypoint. We'll say USR nine and we'll select enter and we could put what type of radial and distance this is going to be. So if we want latitude or longitude, radial distance or two radials. So we'll say radial and distance. So we can see here, the reference is BYP, which is the bottom VOR, the radial. We can adjust that if we want to. So it's currently set on 301.6. We'll just set it to the 300 radial. Distance, again, we can adjust this however we want to. So if we put it at 20 miles, we'll put it at 20 miles even, enter. And now we can see it has built that user nine waypoint on the 300 radial 20 miles from BYP. All right, so the last one that we're going to be looking at is a hold at present position. The way that we hold at a present position is when we have our flight plan menu up, we select menu here in the top right, and we can see we have an option that says hold at present position. Now I'm actually gonna switch over here to the PFD and show you guys how to do this on the PFD because all of the holds that I've shown you so far can be accomplished here on the flight plan here on the PFD. So the way that we do that again is make sure that we have the flight plan selected and up. We select menu, use the large FMS knob to scroll to hold at present position and select enter. And again, customizing just like we did over here on the MFD, we can scroll up and down, use our small FMS knob to make adjustments to whatever we deem necessary. And then we select enter, customize any of this information that we want, put in an EFC time, and then activate. And we can see you saw our CDI move over here, taking us direct to our hold at present position. Anytime you activate this hold at present position, you can see right up here at the top of our screen on the, where the flight director is at, it actually shows us that the hold at present position activates 0.7 miles ahead of our present position. So it's very important that while you're loading a hold at present position, that you do this in a way that is going to put you where you want to be. So it won't immediately start this hold. It will start you in 0.7 miles. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. If you'd like to look at more information, in the description down below, there is a link to the G1000 user's guide with relevant page numbers marked out for you guys to go and read more information about everything I've shown you today. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave it in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and good luck on your check rides.